re-elect Leah Patterson Lust, probate judge. The probate judge has hearings to determine guardianship and conservatorship, adoptions, psychiatric commitments, and to settle all estates. 480 adoption hearings. I have held almost 2,500 hearings for probate cases. Numbers can tell a powerful story. Like 1946, the year Alpha Insurance was founded, or the more than one million policies currently in force. Backed up by superior service from a local agent right in your community. For 65 years, we've been right there with you. We're looking forward to the next 65. For a plan built just for you, contact Talisa Scheichel in Holly Pond. We can't make every annoying thing disappear, but we can eliminate deductibles. Nationwide insurance members who add vanishing deductible get $100 off for every year of safe driving. Join the nation where deductibles go. Nationwide is on your side.
Today's obituaries are brought to you by Moss Service and Hansville Funeral Home. Mr. Onan R. Reed, age 83, of the Berlin community, passed away at his home yesterday. Visitation for Mr. Reed will be held tomorrow at 6 to 8 p.m. at Holly Pond Funeral Home Chapel. Services for Mr. Reed will be held at 2 p.m. Sunday at Holly Pond Funeral Home Chapel. Benjamin Smothers and Horace Hall will officiate. Memorial services for Michael Brian Schultz, 42, of Coleman are incomplete and will be announced at a later date by Coleman Funeral Home. Mr. Schultz died Wednesday. Funeral services for Nola Gorman Hicks, age 79, of Coleman will be at 2 p.m. tomorrow at Moss Service Funeral Home Chapel. The Reverend Danny Ellis officiating interment in Mount Zion Cemetery. Moss Service Funeral Home is directing. Ms. Hicks passed away on Wednesday. Visitation will be 1 to 2 p.m. Saturday at the funeral home. Private family graveside services for Betty June Gorf, age 80 of Indian Springs, Alabama, formerly of Coleman, will be at 1.30 p.m. this Sunday at East Point Cumberland Presbyteries, Presbyterian Cemetery. Moss Service directing. Ms. Gorf passed away on Tuesday. No visitation is planned. Memorial services for Doris Ethel Bradley, age 81, of Hansville, will be at 2 p.m. Sunday at Moss Service Funeral Home Chapel, and they are directing. Ms. Bradley died last Friday. The family will receive friends from 1 to 2 p.m. Sunday at the funeral home. And those are our obituaries for today, brought to you by Moss Service and Hansville Funeral Home. Welcome to Today on 2. It is Friday, the 28th of September, yes. almost the end of September. Yes, I know. It's flown by. Uh, it has gone by fast. Oktoberfest will be starting in a week. Mm -hmm. A lot of things going on in Coleman. Let's start with the weather forecast for today. Our weather brought to you by Mitch Smith Chevrolet on Cherokee Avenue. Make the switch to Mitch. The weather almanac for today, the 28th of September. The average high is 82. The average low is 53. The record high, 96 in 1954. The record low, 36 in 1993. Sunrise this morning at 639. Sunset this afternoon at 634. Here's the satellite picture. And we have been watching that cold front slowly moving southeast throughout the week. And I think by this weekend or the first of next week, we're going to see some cooler temperatures coming through our area. There's the satellite picture over the southeast. Here's the forecast for today. Mostly sunny. We do have a slight chance of rain with a high of 83. Cloudy tonight, 30% chance of rain, low of 61. Tomorrow, sunny and warm once again with a high of 87. But then on Sunday, 77 for the high. And Monday, Tuesday, 79, around 80 on Wednesday. So you'll see a little bit of that cold front coming through, but still great weather for the end of September going into October. Yes. Paige went to the girlfriend gala last night. I did, and let me tell you that Jacqueline Schindel really knows how to throw a party. 
She really does. It was so much fun. It really was. Well, and what got, took place? Um, the theme was uh, like a safari animal kind of print, and I had never seen tablescapes like this before in my life. There were tables that went up to the ceiling and just there were feathers. I mean, there was hardly moved to move to around because people had decorated their chairs and I mean, it was it was absolutely beautiful and people really did work hard on their tables uh -huh. so it was amazing. About how many tables were set up? Um, tablescapes were I set would up. say about 15 to 20. Oh, there was a wow. lot of tables last night. Uh -huh. Yeah. So. And then you also had a dinner and mm -hmm. entertainment? We also had dinner. Stonebridge uh, catered for them, and it was wonderful. Stonebridge mm -hmm. has great cooking. And, um, uh, yeah, we had some entertainment. It was great. It was okay. fun. So much fun. And this was a fundraiser for United Way, That's wasn't right. it? Girlfriend mm -hmm. Gala. You went with, uh, what, your mother and grandmother? My mother and grandmother. So we okay. got some, some girl time last night. It was very fun. Yeah, all right. Good enough. Let's check our Facebook friend of the day. Who's our friend for today? Our Facebook friend of the day today is Gay Hartwig, and she likes movies and attending church. Yeah. And that looks to be like her little granddaughter there with her. How precious. It could even be a great-granddaughter. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I know Gay. And let's see. Our program, this is Friday. That's politics. We have a good lineup for today. We do. We have Barry Willingham and Paul Busman here to visit with us. So we have the Revenue Commissioner and Senator Busman. They'll be with the political panel, George Spear, Tom Drake, and Tom Burleson, right after this commercial break. Hi, I'm Tammy Brown. Whether it's your dad, mother, brother, sister, or child, I'll be there for you, providing impartial and timely resolutions of probate court proceedings. I will stand to protect individuals' rights. I will provide capable leadership and confidence in the probate judge's office. I am ready to put my 22 years' experience to work for you as your probate judge. On November 6th, elect Tammy Brown, probate judge of Coleman County. Ride of your life, you'll find it at Billy Ray Taylor Auto Sales in Coleman. I'm talking about sharp cars and trucks that'll get you noticed and deals too low to believe. Whatever you're looking for, you'll find it and find it for less at Billy Ray Taylor Auto Sales. Come on, North Alabama, it's time you had a sharp set of wheels and a really good deal. Billy Ray Taylor Auto Sales, serving you from two big lots, Highway 31 North and 31 South in Coleman, Alabama. We welcome you to That's Politics. Our guest today, is to begin with, we have two guests, but to start the, the, the show off, we'll have uh, Revenue Commissioner Barry Willingham, who is uh, over in the courthouse. He's actually right here right now, but uh, thank you, Barry, for coming in. Thank you. We're going to start out first, though, with something that was in the news a couple of weeks ago, and it had to do with a case back, was it the 30s, Tom? Uh, uh, yeah, and 32 was when it was finally tried in Decatur, Alabama. The Scottsboro I mean, 33, Boys. 33. The Scottsboro Boys, yeah. Tell us quickly about that case. What was it about? Well, it was just, uh, in those days, the Communist Party was just trying to take over the world. The world was in a recession. Uh, the whole world was at that time, and we were in a bad one here. And so uh, the Scottsboro Boys, uh, there's nine of them got on a train that hoboed. Uh, a lot of people were doing it then. They were going out west to get jobs in the wheat fields and stuff like that, and there was uh, uh, nine black boys on board one of the, the cars, and uh, about three or four white boys, and uh, they got in a fight uh, just after they passed through Scottsboro, when they got down to Paint Rock, Alabama, right below Scottsboro, they all got in the fight, and of course the 
a black boy whipped up on them because they had nine, the others just had four or five, but uh, they were just young kids, you might say. One of them was 13 years old, and and most, it, none of them were over about 24. And uh, so they got in a fight, and the, the, the train had to stop. They were It got so bad, and they had two uh, ladies in the uh, different car, the one above them, and uh, they uh, uh, all got the... They called the sheriff, and the sheriff came out, and he asked them all uh, to make a statement about what, what what was the cause of that and all that kind of stuff, and none of them would say a word. They, they, the white boys and the black boys both, they wouldn't tell anything because they knew they were probably going to go to jail. Well, uh, the, these two white girls got off, and the sheriff supposedly, according to testimony later on by one of them that repudiated it, it, this happened, uh, they said that we got to get some cause and said if you will uh, tell us that they attempted to rape you or rape you, uh, we can take them black boys in. So they did. Uh, they said okay. So they took them in and that night and a few nights thereafter uh, they brought ropes down to the jail to hang them, and they had to had a hard time keeping them out of the jail. And that was <coughs> that was the first part of it. Mm -hmm. And so anyhow, uh, the uh, uh, later on, that one lady repudiated, said it wasn't nothing to that, that that was nothing but a lie. And the sheriff asked them to do that, so they put these people in jail. So anyhow. Uh, during that period of time, uh, my grandfather, who was a, a lawyer in Decatur and a Methodist preacher, and and by the way, part Cherokee Indian, his grandmother was a Cherokee Indian, and I have a picture of him here that shows uh, uh, him uh, uh, there when they moved his case to Morgan County, to Decatur, and uh, uh, my grandfather uh, was, uh, he represented the uh, uh, Scottsboro boys in picking a jury. He uh, acted as an expert in picking a jury. They, uh, but this Libowitz and all them, they didn't. There's no money anywhere. And of course, my grandfather had a uh, two boys in law school. He had uh, a, a, a Judge Newton B. Powell right here. Now, let's show that slide. He's yeah. holding in his hand the, the yeah. slide we've got now. Mm -hmm. Look at the screen. And tell us who's who there. Well, uh, that. Uh, uh, one on the left there is Newton B. Powell. That's the far on the back row left. Uh, yeah, he was the one that uh, that uh, was he was a circuit judge and presiding judge over Morgan, Cullman, Lawrence, and uh, Limestone for many years up until Big Jim Folsom got in office, and then Big Jim Folsom uh, appointed uh, Mary Battles. But he was he was our judge here in Cullman for all those years, and then Sherman Powell was one of the uh, uh, George Wallace supporters and he, he was also a lawyer and he was in law school at the same time and he uh, he ran, ran for governor. Gets He's on the far league. right back row, right? right? He ran for governor at one time and then that little nice looking little <laughs> kid <laughs> in the front row the, the front smallest. Row, they couldn't afford a haircut <laughs> at two years old. Uh, that was me. <laughs> 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 Where's all that hair go? Well, I can tell you where the hair went too. Was, uh, back in those days, you didn't have cars. We had a, a wagon. We had hitch two mules to it to go down to my grandmother's down in Morgan County, uh, where uh, my grandfather Butler Powell lived. And and uh, uh, my daddy met a fella uh, down there had the Ford Flint Creek get across it, but it wasn't hard with the mules and the wagon just to go right across it. So a man. You know, when you meet people in those days, you'd all stop and talk a while. So we, uh, they stopped there, and and uh, this man looked over at me, and he said, Douglas, you sure do have a pretty little girl there. <laughs> and that didn't suit well with my daddy. So when he got down to my grandmother's, he borrowed her clippers and gave my GI. Do you remember that well? I, I, I don't remember it that way on all, but that <laughs> But it happened nonetheless. It happened that way. <laughs> so anyhow... That's, and then, of course, uh, there was another pal here. It was a lawyer, Miles Pal. He's the only one of them still living. Now, which one is he on that picture? Uh, he's right here. The little one on the uh, standing right in, directly in front of Judge Newton B. Pal. So is he? He's still uh, uh, doing a little practice, but not much. And yeah. then the rest of them are, are, are my aunts, and and uh, that's 
about it. Uh -huh. Let's get back to the Scottsboro boy thing. That was in the news recently because there were, has been an effort to try to pardon these guys, right? Well, that's that's the problem. You see, George Wallace, and, and incidentally, uh, this fellow on this one picture here, uh, T. L. Lawson, was a uh, assistant attorney general in that case, and I uh, went to school with his son, Tommy Lawson at the University of Alabama, and, and we talked a lot during those years about the Scottsboro Boys case, and he told me a lot of stuff uh, in history on that. His daddy told him, and so anyhow, the uh, the, the Scottsboro Boys uh, just, uh, George Wallace, uh, 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 you know, he uh, got one of them out, and then, uh, uh, then this present governor uh, pardoned one of them, mm -hmm. But there's two or three or four, uh, there's a number of them, a lot of them, some of them when they got out for a while, they let them out a while, uh, you know, before they, uh, uh, they, they went to Michigan and states like that, and Michigan refused to let Alabama have them because they knew if they got them down here, they was going to elect them. Really? Okay. Uh, Michigan refused to let yeah. them. He said, no, we, no way, you know. Mm -hmm. and nowadays, you right. send them back and forth across the lines, and so they wouldn't let them, but... Uh, I think the problem here is, is they're all deceased now, and the question is, and I don't know, they, they I hope they get it passed entirely to, you know, exonerate all these boys, but there's three or four of them that, that uh, died before they got uh, pardoned, pardoned. Is that right? Yeah. and so that's what they're trying to do now. They're trying to come up with legislation It's kind of hard, if no, uh, this would be the first time it ever happened. To excuse them, or exonerate them, or pardon them uh, that, that after they're deceased. That's the reason it's in the news That's now. That's the reason it's in the, the news account. now, and they got a bill right now, a pending in the legislature, to uh, uh, pardon them, mm -hmm. and uh, that's what they're, going, they're trying to do. You know, it, it would look good if they did that, but I don't know that that's actually legal according to the Alabama law. Wow. Senator Paul Busman has uh, some impact on that issue, I think, when he comes on our program. We'll ask him about that, about this particular bill, I think, that you're talking about, maybe. But let's, let's switch now to our regular political part, and that uh, has to deal with our Revenue Commissioner, Mr. Barry Willingham, who is with us this morning. And we only have a few minutes before we have to take a break, Barry, but, boy, you... Revenue Commissioner has been making news, or their responsibilities are making news and now, this coming year, are they not? Or this year? It's not our doing. <laughs> it's not your doing. Yeah, let me make that clear. It's not your doing. No, no but uh, we did have a lot of legislative changes dealing with our homestead exemptions. It's a pretty good law. We think that there might be a minor change that needs to be done, but uh, it's uh, clarifying the homestead exemptions dealing with the disabled and uh, increase their exemption value um, as far as their income value for over 65 individuals also. Uh, there's letters to the editor that uh, people, uh, elderly folks complaining, I've, I've noticed, saying that, look, you know, we're on fixed income, how come you're doing this? And uh, It actually it, helped the ones that were over 65. Really? Mm -hmm. Explain the, that. They, prior to this year, your federal taxable income had to be less than 7500 And then, so the legislation actually increased that from 7500 to 12000 so they can actually make more money and still be exempt from property taxes. So what was the other, what was the issue going the other way? About the, uh, uh, if they were claiming a disability exemption, now what, what they did is they, uh, they made it where a disability exemption and an over 65 exemption is basically one of the same exemption. Mm -hmm. They both have to claim based on income because the uh, disability exemption was being really abused. You could have a spouse that had uh, still worked or still had, you know, had unlimited income, and you, have, you could have one that was just claiming totally permanently disabled, and they'd be exempt from property taxes. Mm, okay. So uh, that goes into effect this year? The assessment period is, not, is starting October 1 through the end of December, and that will actually be collected on next October. Okay. We're going to take a break, come back with uh, Revenue Commissioner Barry Willingham talking about tags and uh, liability insurance and such after these words. At Premier Bank, we're a bit old-fashioned. We actually answer the telephone when you call. However, old-fashioned doesn't mean we aren't up to date. With the latest technology, Premier Bank meets the various needs of our customers. Mobile smartphone banking, internet banking, ATMs, 
convenient offices. At Premier Bank, we have the right products right now with good old-fashioned customer service. At Premier Bank, we put the customer first. Overwhelmed by home refinancing offers from telephone solicitors and direct mail advertising and then find you're not qualified for a specific plan? The Mortgage Center, a hometown lender, compares the rates from all home loan lenders and the qualifications of the various government programs to find a plan best suited to you. The Mortgage Center helps Coleman County people purchase and refinance their homes. This is Pat Moody. Call us today and let us tailor a loan program to your specific needs and requirements. Meet the KitchenAid 36-inch induction cooktop. It might just change the way you cook. Induction technology heats the pan and not the cooking surface to offer you a new level of precision, speed, and energy efficiency. Nine settings give you different levels of heat to achieve precise temperatures and amazing responsiveness. Water boils in just seconds, making this the fastest to boil induction cooktop available. The KitchenAid 36-inch induction cooktop. I'm Ringo. What can I do for you? Well, my name's Merlin, Pat Merlin. This is my son, Hank. We come a long way, Mr. Ringo. The boy here's going to kill you. We're back with uh, Revenue Commissioner Barry Willingham, Coleman County Courthouse, and talking about a number of issues, uh, including those involving uh, liability insurance. There was a t an attempt 10, 15 years ago, maybe. Uh, about to, 10 years ago. About 10 years ago to ensure that people had liability uh -huh. insurance. But that basically got pushed back by people who objected to it, right? Well, no, it was a, it was a law that was in place, but it was a, uh, a law that was really on the honor system because it was basically when you signed your car tag, you affirmed that you had insurance at that time. And then the state would then just do a random sampling of sending out letters to request information on your mm -hmm. insurance. And if they did not respond in a timely manner, or if they you know, failed to have insurance, they would suspend their car tag. Okay. There are a lot of clunkers. Well, fewer now since the cash for junk cash for program <laughs> we came around a couple of years ago but there are a lot of cars out there that do not that there's no insurance at all on them and that changes if you're going to buy a tag for it beginning January 1st right January 1 if you try to come into the office to buy a car tag and you'll have to provide a what's called an NAIC number mm -hmm. and an expiration date for your policy if you cannot provide that we will not be able to sell your car tag Okay, now so let's say that someone walks in knowing that, and they take the insurance uh, uh, policy and information off of one car and, and gives that. What this law did is it, it it's mandated all the insurance companies to report all their data to the Department of Revenue. So their policy information, the VIN numbers for all their policies with the uh, their the individual's last name, and the uh, NAIC numbers reported. So when that that's then entered into our system, and it goes out to a web service that then verifies that this is a, a valid policy. So in other words, your clerk, beginning January first, whenever mm -hmm. she takes this tag, uh, th this notification, the mm -hmm. tag renewal, and keys it into her computer, she'll know instantly if you have or have not liability insurance, right? We have the ability to inquire uh, limited information. So if somebody comes up and says, well, I have a policy, but I cannot re recall what it is. And so we can actually query the system based on your VIN number, and it will go out and say, yes, that does have a good policy number, and provide us that NAIC number. And, and then that at that point in time. We but will they know? I, I, um, will it would it will it show whether that particular car is covered? Based it on will not. So what happens? What happens if your clerk realizes this guy doesn't have insurance on this? They'll be turned away. So that's putting the clerks in a sort of. A, I mean, I, I mean that's the way that's the way the law should read. I realize, right. but it's going to put your clerk in a tough position there, isn't it? 
Uh, we've done it every day for a while. Oh, really? Well, I mean, it, we're not enforcing that law. Right. But we've had issues where, you know, the tax has been suspended, and, you know, oh, okay. in the past. Okay. But they, they jumped their feet, too, if you violated that, if you in violation of that law. Then they actually jumped that fee two years ago. Did it? It went uh, from 100 to 200 and uh, 200 to 400 two years ago. So now it's it's the same fee on, on the suspension. I was thinking they jumped it to 500. Not, well, I think there's some actually higher fees if you get caught driving without insurance. Yeah. But the suspension fee is the same. Now, this goes for this goes uh, for clerks and revenue commissioner's offices. Mm -hmm. How about deputies on the road that are stopping they, someone? They will have the ability to query the same information mm -hmm. that we have access to so that, you know, if somebody has a insurance form, then they can take that back to their patrol car, key that information in, and it will say, yes, this is a good policy. Because somebody could have a form that says they have insurance, but, you know, let it right. lapse. Yeah. Okay, let's say, for example, you do show up, you try to get your tag, they realize you do not have liability insurance, it's refused, What's, where are you then? What happens next? They've got to go talk to an insurance company. Okay, then you come back, do you pay a fine? Uh, no. Okay, let's say you don't come back, then what happens? You're driving without a tag. Okay, but if you got it parked in your backyard? Yeah, you're fine. You're all right. Okay, as long as it's not on the road. Mm -hmm. Are they going to continue the random? See, I, was, I, I received a random check I don't, six months I'm, ago. I don't think they're going to. What's going to happen is on a continuous basis, the insurance companies report this information to the Department of Revenue. And the only ones that's going to be sent out a letter from here on out is if the policy laps or the policy is canceled. It would seem like that there would have to be a timely thing, mm -hmm. updating this list. I think it's on a nightly basis. On a nightly basis? Because we well, send our data that. to the Department yeah. of Revenue every night. Okay. Okay. Okay, property taxes. Mm -hmm. When are going to? When will the notices be sent out? The bills today. Today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, they go. I thought I was today. lucky. Huh? They go out today. They we don't we don't want to send them out too early on property tax because uh, we can't take any money till October one. Right. So if we send them out and they received them yesterday. We've been getting people today turning them away. So. <laughs> yeah, everything's timely, isn't mm -hmm. it? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, property taxes. Have they basically gone up? or can uh, you We've stayed can flat you? for the last couple of years. We've had a few increases here and there, but mostly it's the only thing we've had is the new construction and new indus industries that's come into Coleman. You're in the business. You know where a lot of growth is. And some of us, of course, notice a lot of growth near what, Cherokee Avenue down here near mm -hmm. Walmart. Mm -hmm. But are there other places you see growth? Uh, it's just basically your um, small track areas where people's building homes now. You don't you don't see the big subdivisions going in like you did four or five years ago because the market's too flat for that. Barry, do you evaluate those houses uh, annually? Well, I mean, it, the Department of Revenue requires us to review all the properties annually. in in a well. It's not all of them annually, but twenty five percent increments ever every year so within a four-year period we review all the properties do you have authority to increase them uh, i don't have the authority department of revenue has authority yeah <laughs> there's a difference there. but you, let's you clarify have, that right you yeah. have the authority to recommend it to the revenue well actually the they, they, the department of revenue reviews all of the statistical data and then we that send that, that to them and the department of revenue says you're to go up this many percent when's the deadline for property tax December thirty first without penalty. And if it falls on a holiday or, or you know, it usually falls on the weekend, there's a day grace period by you know, postmark also. Usually and it's inevitable, departments will request a budget increase to the mm -hmm. county commission. Mm -hmm. What did your budget look like when after you finished submitting it? Did you get what you wanted? Oh well I um I pretty much we cut probably Forty or fifty thousand dollars. I mean, we we've, we've been slowly cutting because my staff has really decreased since I've taken office. So, how have you been able to uh, to do that? Just through attrition, cross training. You know, we you know when I was elected, we had forty seven employees. Took office with forty five, and uh, I'm down to thirty four right now. Thirty four. 
Are all the uh, satellite offices operating? Mm -hmm. We got our uh, Dodge City office, Bayleton office, and we have the office in Town Hall, uh, City Hall of Hansville now. There's a lot of money spent on software to keep software up mm -hmm. to date. Mm -hmm. What percentage would you say or about would, of your budget consists of that? Probably about 15%. 15. Mm -hmm. Payroll takes up a bunch, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Payroll is your biggest, that and insurance. Were your employees happy with the 3% increase? Oh, yeah. They wish they was on this pay stub, though. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But they're happy. Yeah. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're pleased with the commission being able to do that for them. Any new tags since we talked last? There's, I don't know who has more tags, Alabama or Georgia or some of the others. I'm not sure, but I know that Alabama has a lot of different there's tags. Se there's several in uh, the commitment stage right now. And, oh, uh, like, like what? Well, there, there's a good one. There's the, um, um, let me think. It's, um, oh, goodness. There's been like eight of them come, come down the pipeline. Um, Breast cancer is one of the newer ones, is it not? Well, there's the there's like two two of those. Those been in effect for quite a while. Uh, autism tag. That's the, that's a good one. That they're still waiting on the number of commitments they got to have. And how, about how many has to be committed to they that? They need a thousand commitments. And a couple months ago, they had only like uh, 250 or 300. So, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, there's that's interesting because that gets a lot of attention media wise. Mm -hmm. Autism that problem mm -hmm. does. But you're not seeing that much interest in people purchasing tags. Though. Well, it's some other fifty dollars out of people's pocket that they're. How many retired military tags or people with veterans tags? And I fought in Vietnam, or I was over here. I you was got every there. campaign. Every campaign has a tag. Um, and you know, so in World War II, there was Battle of the Bulge tag. You know, there's atomic nuke tag. There, you know, there's other, and then. You know, every every campaign, then you have a, a tag for all the military. You know, they passed that two years ago. So right. There's army, navy, active Air duty, Force uh, active uh, duty type tags, or retired. They're they're for active duty or retired. Either or. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just the Marines. You have to pay more. They did <laughs> they did that to the. That was the Marine, uh, Alabama Corps, of, uh, Marine Corps is the uh, league. Marine Corps League of Alabama. Marine Corps League. Yeah, that they, they charge more. Mm -hmm. Well, they used to pay pay more in blood, I think. In <laughs> <laughs> so why not more in cash? Yeah. <laughs> uh, are you seeing fewer of the World War II tags of any description being sold? Oh yeah, yeah. We we can. I looked it up the other day, and you don't you don't have them as many as you did. Pearl Harbor survivor tags was one I saw often, but I don't see it as much anymore because those are folks are dying out yeah. quite right quickly, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. And uh, that and the atomic nuke tag. Oh, uh, really? I've not sold one of those in years. Atomic nuke? Is that like the test? That's that the ones that went? you could have been a civilian at that time and and be a part of the testing of that. Is that the least selling one that you've seen? or I've not there? seen it sold, the first one. I saw the first one, yeah. If you're in fewer, I guess, of those mm -hmm. folks. If you survived it that long, you probably... Tell us what happens to property taxes. Okay, <coughs> once a person pays their property tax mm -hmm. by December 31st, yep. where does that money go? Uh, your property taxes are broke, broken down into the millage rate. And so you got a state millage rate, a county millage rate, school, and then a municipality if you, have, if you live in the city limits. <clears throat> what we have to do is, um, by state law, there's a commissions that's taken from the taxes and distributed back to just to the county commission. And that used to be the tax assessor and tax collector's salary. So when the, that was combined and the revenue commissioner became salary, that those monies are still collected, but then it goes straight to the county commission for funding the departments and general fund. So if we collect, you know, uh, $50, and 10% of it's to go to the state, we write $5 to the state check, we write the county a check, we write the school a check, we write the municipalities a check. So the uh, <clears throat> the 5th and the 20th of every month, we have to have that dispersed. Okay. Anything else you need to tell us about uh, your office and business? Uh, just make sure if you did receive an exemption form renewal from us uh, this past September, have those back to us by the end of December, and that way we can get them all processed in a timely manner.
In order to avoid the 15 seconds of fame in your name in the list of delinquent taxpayer, you have to be paid by December 31st, right? No, you actually have grace periods there, but that um, usually is the March 1. Yeah, March 1. So we're we're going to send out certified letters March 1, and then just two weeks after that, if it's not <coughs> taken care of, you're going to be in the Then paper. you're going to be somebody in the paper. Yeah. All right. <laughs> good enough. Thank you, Barry, for coming to see us. Thank you. We'll Thank be you back in the second half. Did we'll a good job. Bus Thank you for these yep. words. You do. Cheyenne, Cheyenne, where will you be camping tonight? Lonely man, Cheyenne, will your heart stay free and light? Dream, Cheyenne. At Premier Bank, we take pride in serving our community. We respect our customers, and we've won awards for our ethical conduct. We're motivated to do all we can for you, and we're interested in your banking needs. We're efficient, safe, and sound, and our relationships with our customers are second to none. At Premier Bank, we put the customer first. There's stuff around your house, but we don't make stuff. We make ovens, dual fuel double ovens, and they bake so evenly that now delicious is something you can depend on. We only make things for one room, the best room, your kitchen. We're devoted to it, and you can feel it in everything we make. Nobody knows the kitchen like KitchenAid. Overwhelmed by home refinancing offers from telephone solicitors and direct mail advertising and then find you're not qualified for a specific plan? The Mortgage Center, a hometown lender, compares the rates from all home loan lenders and the qualifications of the various government programs to find a plan best suited to you. The Mortgage Center helps Coleman County people purchase and refinance their homes. This is Pat Moody. Call us today and let us tailor a loan program to your specific needs and requirements. We continue with the day on two. It's time to give away our prizes for today. And we have the meal special for two at High Tide Sports Grill. As one of our prizes, we also have two cupcakes from Frosting's Bakery. And those are the prizes for today. Let's look at our merchant ads. We'll ask you a question, of course, about one of these ads. Tutor Doctor, make this the best school year ever. Free consultation is available. You can go online in the home tutors-alabama.com or give them a call. Savings not just 50%. New to Coleman is the Hydromaster Tire at People's Tires. This is a, quick, a premium quality remold tire that looks like new and wears like new. Fest Hall Market Plots will be open again tomorrow from 8 until 3. They're still open Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. They have a variety of fresh veggies. Fest Hall Market Plots, the corner of Arnold Street and First Avenue. Deb's Bookstore is your hometown bookstore just down the road. Used books are half price every day and new books are 20% off every day. Browsers are welcome and gift certificates are available at Deb's Bookstore. Mr. Plumber, plumbing, sewer, and drain services locally owned and operated. Mr. Plumber has uh, commercial, residential service, and remodeling service. Call Mr. Plumber. Mr. Hicks Menswear has business suits and men's sports coats in regular big and tall sizes. He is awarded the Reader's Choice for the winner of the Men's Best Clothing, and he's located on Compass Way. And Uniform Place has fabulous fall fashions, inspired new looks for style at work. Uniform Place on 2nd Avenue Southeast. Tires for Us more, has more than just tires. They offer air conditioning, oil changes, and minor engine repairs. They have 80 years of experience, and mention you saw them on Channel 2 and receive $5 off an oil change. Tires for Less. And right next door, you'll find Earl's Body Shop. They remind you, move over for emergency vehicles. Earl's Body Shop, offering 24-hour wrecker service, located on Highway 31 North in Coleman, or on the internet, earlsbodyshop.com. Those are some of the merchant ads. Tell us which advertiser has fabulous fall fashions. New styles, new looks for fall. We just had the ad on there. 
fabulous fall fashions are available at which one of our advertisers? First person with the correct answer receives the meal special for two at High Tide Sports Grill and two cupcakes from Frosting's Bakery. 256-734-7399 is our telephone number. Remember, just one winner per household within a 30-day period of time. Line one. Line one, they tell me. We have a caller ready. Hello, who's calling? Hi, Ann. Hi, Ann. From where are you calling? Coleman. Okay, what's the right answer? Mr. Hicks. No, I'm sorry. It's not Mr. Hicks. Think about it and call us back. We're talking about new fall fashions coming in, and Paige, we have a call on line two. There we go. Hello, caller. Can I ask who's calling? My name is Sarah. All right, and where are you calling from? San Mark. Okay, and what's your answer for us? Uniform place. That's correct. Yes, stay on the line, please. Uniform place has new looks and new styles for fall. And let's look at the rest of our merchant ads right now. Starting with Cosmic Sound a DJ Service, 26 years experience. Call Big D or Wild Bill, 256-736-3888. And kick off your fall season at It's My Party. They have things for tailgating parties, all occasion balloons, and you can book Lulu the Gorilla for special events at It's My Party. You're in good hands with Sorelli at Doug Dogger Jewelers. Sorelli is antique inspired heirloom jewelry. That's why you shop at Doug Dogger Jewelers on Compass Way. Baldwin Counseling Center. Having problems, need to talk, or want privacy? Help is only a phone call away. You can call Dr. Howard Rogers at the Baldwin Counseling Center. He's solving problems one at a time from weight loss to lifestyle coaching. Fitness opportunities available at the Wellness and Aquatic Center. They have the full fitness center with weights, cardio, and professional training. They have aerobic and cycling classes. That's the Wellness and Aquatic Center. Wellness Body Shop on Highway 31 south of Phelan. You've counted on them for over 52 years, and you can count on them today. Call Sunny, Stacy, Beth, or Jen at Mullins Body Shop. Sweet deals available at Dairy Queen. Pick any three items. Pay just $4.44. And the last couple of days for the blizzard of the month, Oreo, buy one, get one for 99 cents right now at Dairy Queen. High Tide Sports Grill on Highway 31, uh, next to Burgess Body Shop. They are open Monday through Thursday uh, from 3 to 9, Friday 3 to 10, and Saturday 10 to 10, so go out and see them tonight. And Shimmer and Glow Tanning Boutique, open 8 till 8, Monday through Friday, 8 to 4 on Saturday, beginning intermediate and advanced tanning, stand-up tanning, spray tanning, they do it all. Shimmer and Glow on 2nd Avenue, across from It's My Party. Open the door to history and fine prints. We're talking about Renard's Gallery and Gifts. They offer jewelry, framing, and prints. You can find them on the web at renardsgallery.com or give them a call, 739-5997. And those are the merchant ads we have for today. Now it's time to check our birthdays and anniversaries and give away those prizes for today. Let's start with our birthday for today. This Friday, Gail Key celebrates a birthday along with Anthony Demonia. Saturday, Geraldine Denton celebrates a birthday. And Sunday, Bruce Bentley celebrates. And now it's time to draw for our 8x10 portrait from Baker Photography and our ice cream cake from Dairy Queen. Okay, our weekly winner is Anthony Demonia. Anthony's birthday is today. Okay. He birthday. wins our uh, prize for today. We just had one anniversary for this week. That's right, and it's on Sunday, Jerry and Alice White. And, of course, they win the gift certificate to the Candle Garden. Mm -hmm. Let's see, we have the weather forecast brought to you by Mitch Smith Chevrolet on Cherokee Avenue. Sunny today, slight chance of rain, a high of 83. Cloudy tonight, again, a slight chance of rain, a, high, a low near 61. Sunny Saturday with a high near 87. There's something about the moment when you first walk into that new home. It took a lot to get there, but Eva Bank made it easy to get the loan you needed. Eva Bank, as a part of the community, makes lending decisions right here where you live. Our lenders make the process quick and easy with rates you'll love. Visit your neighbors at Eva Bank today and let them help you with your new home loan, manufactured home, refinance, or remodel. Eva Bank, part of the community we call home. Life lived in black and white is not a life lived. Today, I choose color. To see it. To feel it. To be in it. To be upon it. And to live a life surrounded by it. Today, I put on a fresh coat.
At Premier Bank, we are very proud of the long-lasting relationships we have with our customers. We'll go almost anywhere to meet your banking needs. Voting has gone through a lot of changes in America since the days of the early West. Because they were short of pencils and paper at that time, they used various things as ballots. Feathers, beans. In one section of Arizona, they used bullets. If it was loaded, it was a vote for one candidate. And if it was empty, it was a vote for another. If the fellow wasn't careful, his whole campaign could blow up right in his face. Dick Powell. Zane Gray Theater. And in the second half, we welcome Senator Paul Bussman to That's Politics. Uh, talking primarily, we want to begin, uh, Senator, by talking about the September 18th referendum. It did pass. Uh, you were were sort of wondering about it to begin with, and then you came out against it because you felt there was a lot of waste that could have been cut and, and fat, so to speak. Well, I, needless to say, I was disappointed in the vote, um, but it, uh, you know, and, and disappointed in the fact that I was unable to get the facts out in a way that people would understand them. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, as most of y'all know, that it, fear always trumps fact. Uh, and if you can, if you can, uh, if you can convince people that there's bad things going to happen or could happen, then the facts don't no longer matter. And right. and so, uh, you know, it was set up that way. It was set up to to uh, to intimidate people, to make people scared, uh, and that's what it did. And so now we have to. The problems are not fixed. We still have Medicaid problem. We still have a prison problem. We still have a huge budget problem. Uh, and so what we're going to have to do now is fix the budget problem, fix the Medicaid problem, and then add on a, a payback issue uh, in 2016. And the, the, the payback bill that I see right now is not acceptable. Uh, the payback bill says we have to pay it off by 2026. It doesn't have any amortization at all, so what they'll do is they'll wait till 2026, and we'll have this huge amount of money we'll have to pay back. So uh, I will put a, uh, an amendment on that bill that we have to amortize that starting in 2016. We'll have to pay 10% of that money every year until we pay it off. Uh, and so that's, in my opinion, the best thing we can do with that. Um, but the main thing now is we've got to fix the budget. We've got to really get, uh, get serious on, on the budget issues that we've got. Uh, after your last appearance on our program here, that's politics, and also the uh, whenever you had your press conference down uh, near Birmingham, you uh, you posted on your web page attack the person challenging this. Basically, is what that has happened: intimidation, scare tactics, half truths. He said last that that previous Thursday there was a state contract request for 1.3 million dollars for Weight Watchers. What happened to that request? Uh, that got turned down. The uh, contract review committee refused to authorize that contract, which is a great thing. Uh, that's, a, that's a huge start that we're not uh, approving contracts of such ridiculous things. Uh, you know, most people in the general public, if they want to go to Weight Watchers, you know, they have to pay for that out of their own pocket. Uh, and for some reason, the state agencies and the state employees felt like that was something that the state should have paid for them. Uh, and, and that is just one prime example of, of how the, the mentality of, of of government is, and, and it's just not acceptable. There, there, there's probably, a, what, a senator introduced this bill or this request? No, this, this came from, from departments. Oh, from this, departments? This came oh, from, boy. from, it didn't come through the legislature at all. Right. Uh, this is just a request similar to a computer purchase, uh, something that they have now that we've gotcha. made a few changes where uh, most things have to come through contract review before they can sign off on a, on a contract with somebody. Do you feel you'll be successful? Senator Bussman, uh, in your attempts to get this debt paid off in a timely manner? I have no question I'll be successful. <laughs> uh, I've already had many discussions, emails with, with my leadership. Uh, well, the first thing I sent out the day after the election was that we, uh, the first piece of legislation that comes through the Senate better be the repayment bill. Uh, and as most of you know, two or three days later, the leadership came out and said, uh, that'll be the first thing that we pass. 
so they're here they're listening uh, I've also made it clear that by the 15th today we're going to start dealing with the budgets and if we don't start dealing with the budgets then then I don't think we ought to do any other business than the Senate and uh, I've not been hesitant about stopping the Senate when things go awry and I think that after the 15th today if we're still not dealing with budgets then we're going to do the same thing we did last year and we're going to wait to the last minute and that's just not acceptable you know this really Paul this your position on things I think many of us agree with you and, and obviously support you like for, I, I, I believed in the September 18th referendum that it was waste you know that it should have been cut that it should have been voted down this puts you, though, in an unfortunate position because you have other Republicans. The governor's going to be in town today, you know, for the Topre dedication. That puts you at a, something at a disadvantage. How do you overcome that? Because you have to depend, be dependent on some of your, your, your peers, you know. Well, I, I, you know, it, is a, it can be a disadvantage. Yeah. Uh, it also can be a, a, a spark that, that leads to change. Uh, and and I, I hope and that's where we're going to go. And, and I think the leadership has heard over the last two weeks from strong Republicans that that was not the best thing for them to do uh, with this amendment. And, and they're very much aware of where they're at and the position they're at. Uh, personally, if, if I take a political hit from that, you know, that's just part of it. You know, that's the problem we got in Montgomery and the problem we got in Washington is nobody's willing to, to risk their political career to tell people the honest truth. And that's all I'm trying to do is tell people the truth the way I see it. Uh, you know, if if people don't like that, then then there will be an election coming up at some point to, to let them change, let them make that decision. Uh, but while I'm in office, I'm going to do everything I can to be honest with the people. I'm going to tell people where I stand, and, and I'm not going to worry about what happens in 2014. You know, that, that will come in, in, in due time. My job right now is, is to do the best I can for the state and do the best I can for my district. I think you will come out a winner that way myself. We've had we've had too much of this stuff like like you're talking about. Uh, uh, they go around and tell we're going to do this, and we're going to do that, and they don't do nothing, you know. So well, you know, and I, the, I like I like uh, your attitude being different from what it's been in the past. Well, and I and I you know I hope we can have honest discussion about issues that are very difficult issues, uh, and we don't have you know retaliation because of. It. And and if we do, then then you know we'll have to deal with that on 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 the side, but. Uh, you know, I, I'm very comfortable where I'm at. Uh, I'm very comfortable in the in the fact that I, I feel very confident that what I'm doing is right, mm -hmm. uh, and and that 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 will be uh, in due time. That will that will show up. On your web page, Senator, you had mentioned that you were going to ask one of the departments in Montgomery who was behind all the money spent in trying to promote the September 18th referendum. Did you ever get an answer? Well, you can go on the uh, Secretary of State website now and see the see the report. Uh, out of about a uh, million dollars, was what uh, Keep Alabama Working Pact raised. Over half of that was from the Alabama Nursing Home Association. Nursing so, homes. So you've got five hundred thousand dollars out of the Nursing Home Association. Uh, was education involved in giving some of that too? I don't think they gave any money. They were involved in the in the. They, the they, were, they were involved uh, in the voting. Yeah, but the, yeah. I don't think the the AEA or any of those groups actually funded. Uh, if they did, it was less than twenty five thousand dollars, which was was minor. Yeah. Uh, but the bulk of the money came from the Alabama Nursing Home Association, um, and that's you know that. You was had a, a, you had a mountain to climb. You had you had the education. To, you had to go find education, and all the health care people they had all them in line. Let me ask you big organizations. See, Ralph, I don't understand that, the education concern. Well, what was it, how was it going to affect them? Uh, if well, that, if that, if that, if that, I'll tell you how it was going to affect them. If what they thought, I don't know whether it would or not, but they thought if, if that uh, failed, then the next place is going to jump was to the Education Trust Fund. That's right. exactly where they're thinking. Yeah, and ah. the speaker hit it right on the head. Uh, you know, education knew that if this amendment didn't pass, for us <laughs> to deal with the budget issues, we may decide to to join the two budgets together. We may decide to go over to the Education Trust uh -huh. Fund and bring some money over to the General Fund. So they knew that if it didn't pass that there was that risk. And so they didn't want to take that risk. Uh, and, okay. and so you follow the money. And yeah, they had to speak of If you follow the money, you're going to figure out where the, <laughs> hey, they had where the issue is. That's why we're out here campaigning. <laughs> and, you know, we had, we, had, we had nurses at the hospital, uh, you know, being told they may lose their job. Uh, yeah. You know, the maternity ward at Coleman Senior Hospital may close. Here uh, I mean, you know, it was, a, uh, you know, it was just a tremendous uh, fear attack. And, 
And unfortunately, like I said, you know, I can't blame anybody for voting when they're right. worried about their job. Right. Uh, and, and unfortunately, I was unable to convince them that that, uh, that was not going to happen. Uh, but in Coleman, you know, we it went two to one across the state, but in Coleman it was only 54, 46. We noted like that. that, So, yes. I mean, it's uh, the people of Coleman understand. Yeah. And I think they saw a little bit more than, than the other other parts of the state did. One of the, this next issue is one that we've talked about before, and it's one that seems to get caught in your hair quite a bit, people sending you emails and all. The State Veterinary Board considering new regulations that could cause nonprofit clinics like the Alabama Spay and Uter Clinic and others like it to close down because they don't have actual veterinarians who are running and using the equipment. How did that get to be such a, an issue? Well, I don't know how it got to be such an issue, but I can I can tell you, like I was talking before, it's it's uh, I get more emails on this one issue than any other issue that we deal with in the state legislature. Uh, this is f uh, hands down the the biggest email generator that I have, and and the problem is that the law states that a nonprofit, somebody not a dentist, I mean not a veterinarian, cannot own a a, a veterinary clinic, uh, and so they're enforcing the law. Oh, and, and okay. until the law is changed, you know they have to, they have to enforce that law. Uh, the one thing that that does concern me is is some of these spade and neuter clinics, although they are necessary, want to get into the veterinary business. Oh, and they want to go be above and beyond right. clipping. I, so I don't have a problem with with them doing spade and neuter on, on a cheap uh, to to keep the animal population right. down. But uh, you know I don't. Uh, you know when they start getting into other areas of veterinary medicine. Uh, where they're at a, a tax advantage to that veterinarian, then, then I think we've got to be very careful with that. We had this issue come up, the Forever Wild Amendment. Mm -hmm. They're trying to get this on the, on the ballot right in November. Right. Right. Forever Wild, trying to bring more hunting areas into right. the... <laughs> that seems like a frivolous thing compared to the things we've been facing well, this year. It, it is and it isn't. The, the one thing that, that Forever Wild does, it protects and sets aside land uh, for public use for hunting, for fishing. Uh, it also protects wildlife areas. Uh, it prevents, uh, you know, things like down in the in South Alabama. Uh, you've got a lot of wetlands down there. It protects those wetlands, and so it's it's a it's a very good issue. Uh, I think it's uh, you know it'll be challenged this time because of the financial part of it. How much would it take in budget wise? Uh, what it does, it takes out 10 percent of the. Uh, of the income that goes to the tr Alabama Trust Fund, and it uses that that income to to purchase land uh, for Alabama uh, Forever Wild. Now that it has to be done on a on a very clear, uh, defined basis. You know, you just can't go out and buy land. Uh, you know, if somebody wants to pay a dollar more for it, then they can buy it. The state can't buy it. So there's a lot of uh, of uh, safety nets, I think, that's in place to keep that from getting out of hand. It would seem, though, to the, the layman out here who's <laughs> trying to figure out whether I should have voted for it, September 18th, the, refer the refer referendum for or against involving the trust fund money, that if you're told you're going to close a nursing home, but you're going to buy some property, that seems like there's a world's apart there. How well, do you explain th that? Those are the decisions that we have to make in the next two years. Yeah. I mean, those are the, the critical decisions that we have to make. You know, I would have preferred to have seen on the amendment be that we we set back forever while for a couple of years and yeah. not make those payments until we get financially stable to do that i mean you as a person and i as a person wouldn't go out and buy property when right. when, the, when the house is on fire uh but but like i said this is designated in the constitution as it is it, it's been going on for many many years as a constitutional amendment uh, and this just extends that a little farther so there, there are issues with it but we i think it's a good program for the state of alabama and it's important that we maintain uh, good public hunting lands and good, uh, you know, lands that, that are just for public use. Okay. Senator Paul Busman, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so good very much. I want to ask you something, Paul. For today on two, that's politics. We got, we, we, uh, we're number four from the bottom. Fire, accident, storm. They all happen in Coleman County. And for three generations, Night Free Insurance has been there for you. Continuing today with Elliott and Westcott Free. Customizing your life, home, auto, and business insurance with auto owners. Call Westcott, Elliott, Judy, Tina, Angie, or Karen. Night Free Insurance, where people are the difference. Hi, I'm Tammy Brown. 
whether it's your dad, mother, brother, sister, or child, I'll be there for you, providing impartial and timely resolutions of probate court proceedings. I will stand to protect individuals' rights. I will provide capable leadership and confidence in the probate judge's office. I am ready to put my 22 years experience to work for you as your probate judge. On November 6, elect Tammy Brown, probate judge of Coleman County. If you're looking for the ride of your life, you'll find it at Billy Ray Taylor Auto Sales in Coleman. I'm talking about sharp cars and trucks that'll get you noticed and deals too low to believe. Whatever you're looking for, you'll find it and find it for less at Billy Ray Taylor Auto Sales. Come on, North Alabama. It's time you had a sharp set of wheels and a really good deal. Billy Ray Taylor Auto Sales, serving you from two big lots, Highway 31 North and 31 South in Coleman, Alabama. In the nation, we can't make every annoying thing disappear. But we can eliminate deductibles. Nationwide insurance members who add vanishing deductible get $100 off for every year of safe driving. Join the nation where deductibles go. Nationwide is on your side. Our community billboards are brought to you by Pepsi and Coleman Jefferson Gas. Bethsaida Baptist Church will be celebrating 125 years of service at Bethsaida Baptist Church on Saturday, September the 29th at 10.30. With this ring bridal show will be Sunday, September the 30th from 1 to 5 at Stonebridge Farms. This will be a Grace Episcopal Church Women's Cheese Ball Sale. Uh, has eight different cheese balls for you to choose from at $8 each. The last day to order will be October 3rd. Oktoberfest at St. John's Church will be Monday, October the 8th, 2012, from 5 to 7. The cost is $10. Music by the Revelations and the First Baptist Church Quartet. The second annual Mission Possible 5K will be Saturday, October the 13th at 7 uh, a.m. This will be at Coleman Sportsman's Lake and the cost is $20. Our community billboards are brought to you by Pepsi and Coleman Jefferson Gas. If you'd like to email us a billboard, you can do that. Send it to channel2coleman at gmail.com, fax it to 256-734-7680, or friend us on Facebook, Channel 2 Coleman. Weather forecast for today, mostly sunny, slight chance of rain, a high near 83. For tonight, it'll be cloudy, slight chance of rain, low near 61. Plenty of sunshine tomorrow with a high of 87. Coming up on Monday on Today on 2, who's our guest? Monday, the Coleman Women's League will be here with us. They're going to talk about one of their upcoming fundraisers. Also, Ernest Houck and Nancy Moore, who's a burgermeister for this year's October Fest, are going to be here with us. That's what we have lined up on Monday. Have a great weekend. Thank you for watching Today on 2.